it's funny because I was going to talk to my wife about it, but she's been mad at me. <laughs> she's been asking me to paint the, paint the bedroom. I had a drawer that needed fixed. And uh, <laughs> I'm not good at the housework stuff. <laughs> you know, and the one thing I just love about the Lord, because the Lord don't have to do anything. Amen. You know, when, when Christ died, he didn't have to do it. He did the whole thing till it was finished. Come on now. You know. And uh, I'm a half, I have to do things sometimes at home. So the Lord has been on my heart, it's been on, you know, the sell out for Christ. You know, sometimes men, as men, you know, we don't want to, we hold stuff in. It's like, we, when we love something, we don't, we, sometimes we don't show it the way we should. You know, I love the Lord. Amen. But, so why don't I shout out and say that I love the Lord? So the Lord, that's been on my heart. So this, this it's funny. I, I had this scripture on my heart this morning, and and then Brother Arnold and Deacon Clyde came in the office, and they got on me and say, "You, you doing you doing devotion today?" <laughs> and they know I get nervous to come up in front of the church, but I just I just thank the Lord for saving me and keeping me and, and even dealing with me and all my shortcomings. And um, He's definitely worthy. He's definitely enough, and I, I just thank him. So I'm, I'm going to read from Psalms 1. It says, uh, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the, seat, in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaves does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the rights of the righteous for the lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked will perish so may the lord add a blessing at the reader and the hearers of his word amen let us bow our heads in our hearts praise your name father god praise your name Father God, we just thank you for another opportunity to come out to worship and praise you today, Lord. Lord God, you didn't have to, but you did. And we say thank you. Thank you. Father God, we just pray right now for those sick among us right now. We lift up those who are in the hospitals and nursing homes. We lift up Sister Clark to you right now, Lord. We ask that you might just visit her, Lord God. Strengthen her in her condition, Lord. Encourage her, Lord God, as she spend time with you. We lift up Sister Aisha, Lord God. We don't know fully what's going on, Lord, but we ask that you might just use those doctors, Lord, to find out, Lord. And Lord God, as he go through her um, uh, speed bumps in life, Lord, we pray that she might drive closer to you as well, Lord. Strengthen her family, Lord God, as her loved ones watch her go through this uh, process, Lord. Work it out, Lord, as only you can do. And Lord God, we just pray for, for those who are don't know you, who don't have a relationship with you, for someone who heard about you but don't know you, Lord, pull at their heart today, tug their hearts, Lord, convict them, Lord God, that they might come to know you, Lord. Have your way to do it, Lord. We pray for the man who's going to share the gospel today, Lord. Use him for your glory, Lord. Use him for your glory. And Lord, as I close, we just thank you for another opportunity to worship and praise you, Lord. We love you, and we want to praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. We have come into this house to magnify his name and worship him. We have come into this house to
to magnify his name and worship him. We Forget about ourselves. So forget about yourselves. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. So Concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourselves and concentrate on him and worship Christ. Our Lord, worship Him, Christ our Lord. Let's lift up holy hands. Yes. Let us lift up holy hands. Word. 
flow. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your voices and devotion, our brothers uh, and sister on the instrument, and uh, we come to give God all the honor and the praise. Will you bow your hearts uh, with me just for a minute? Heavenly Father, thank you for what we've already experienced, what, we, what we've already seen, what we've heard, we come now to give you the honor and the glory. We ask you would give the congregation ears to hear and hearts to receive your word. Help me to make it plain that we can grasp it and live in a way that's pleasing in your sight. Thank you for who you are and what you're doing in the life of Friendship Baptist Church and what you're doing in our lives personally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going back, uh, Gary Frost preached last week, we're going back to the book of James where we were, James chapter 5, winning with the word in James chapter 5. And so starting out, there was the warning, there's the message from James to the unrighteous rich, the unrighteous rich, starting in James 5, 1. He says, come now you rich, talking about unrighteous rich. You can be rich and righteous. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about unrighteous rich. And he tells them, don't boast about tomorrow, and uh, so on and so forth. And they're mistreating people. They've gotten rich by evil and wicked ways. 
Um, uh, the next thing in James chapter 5, verse 7, the message is a message that calls us to wait. If you are righteous in Christ, you're called to wait for the coming of the Lord. In other words, everything is not going to be made right. I was looking at something this morning downstairs on the wall of one of the Sunday school uh, classes, and it says, life is not fair, but God is good. Amen. That's downstairs on the, Sunday, on the wall in a Sunday school lesson. I said, hey, that's, there, that's it. And so don't think as a, just because you're a Christian, life is going to be fair. Amen. It's probably going to be worse. Because one of the things that God does with us is he disciplines us so we become more like Jesus. We don't become more like Jesus living a life that everybody agrees with us and everything goes right. You, you stay the same. So there are some things that are not going to change. Amen? And as uh, uh, one, one doctor of philosophy says, don't isolate. She says, isolation now, this don't come from me. This come from one of the doctors here. <laughs> says, isolation is the workshop of the enemy of, of Satan. So don't isolate. When things get bad, you need to tell somebody. Amen. Remember the old song, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody? <laughs> there you go. Couldn't keep it to myself. <laughs> yeah, we got to tell what the Lord has done for us. That's a part of the process of growing. That's what James is saying here. Things that aren't going to go right, and there's a tendency that we try to isolate and handle it on our own, on our own rather. And James says, don't do that. So he says we need to get it together. First of all, understanding the Lord is at hand, and then it says he's the judge at the door. You and I are not equipped to judge. Amen. Because we don't know the insides and the out. We don't know what's going on. We don't know motives. We, only God is equipped to judge. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So in the meantime, James 5, 9. James 5, do not grumble against one another. Brothers and sisters, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. You get that? See, if I'm grumbling, the reason I'm going to be condemned is because I done stepped into Jesus' pot. I'm grumbling and complaining. I'm passing judgment. And Jesus says, hold up. There ain't but one judge here. And you don't qualify. Amen. You can put the music on in the 60s. Here come the judge, y'all. But you ain't the judge. <laughs> Jesus is the judge. So then James uh, tells us that we need to be an example of the prophets, an example of uh, the farmers, and an example of Job, because the end of the Lord is that he's very compassionate and he's merciful. By his mercy, he saves us. Amen. All right. And, and then he says in James 5, 12, you know, he says this, James 5, 12. Look, look at it on the screen. But above all, my brethren, do not swear. That means take, make an oath. I tell you, I'm, I promise you I'm going to be here tomorrow. I promise you I'm going to do this. And he says, he says, either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. But let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into judgment. See, the idea is that my life is not my own. I'm dependent upon God. And we, we make oaths, you know. And I always say, and that's what, uh, after the message, uh, when Gary was here two weeks ago, he said to me, well, I learned something from you. <laughs> you, taught me not to, you taught me to say Lord willing. I said, Gary, you already knew that. But I just, I just focus on that because I realize the Lord has shown me, oh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. And, then, and I can't get there. So I often say uh, uh, for years, Lord willing, <laughs> if the Lord wills, I'll do this or I'll do that understanding that if the Lord doesn't will, there's nothing I can do to overrule that. I'm dependent upon him. So, above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth. See, there's an arrogance and there is hypocrisy in this verse. The arrogance, you tell me what you're going to do. <laughs> and the hypocrisy 
is that instead of being honest, you're swearing, you're swearing by heaven and earth because there's no condemnation to that. You know, you don't mean it. You see what I'm saying? So often, well, I swear, see, I, uh, I would say this, uh, I swear uh, by my car keys. <laughs> I figure I got uh, more than one set. You see what I'm saying? The, the, I mean, there's no consequence in swearing by, by uh, car keys. But if I say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to do this, now there are consequences. So people would, would swear by lesser things knowing they weren't going to do it. And, but there's no, you know, there's no, com, uh, no uh, uh, comments, not, not, uh, no condemnation. Thank you, my sister. No condemnation uh, in that. Above all, brothers, so, see, we need to be honest with one another. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. no that, that's enough. You don't have to go into the religious, the religiosity of sounding to be someone who's pious. <laughs> you, know, you know how, again, uh, we do that, that. We speak that Christianese. What do you mean by Christianese? I mean, you know, uh, we talk this Christian language, so to speak. You know, so I see you, see you in the morning and uh, then I say to you, uh, praise the Lord, my brother. Praise the Lord, my sister. Uh, may you be blessed and have a wonderful day. And so on and so forth. You know, we, those kind of things. And then instead of just saying, hey, man, how you doing? Good to see you this morning. Oh, no, you've got you to give me a Christian greeting. May you be blessed beyond measure. May you be too, may you too, be, may you be too blessed to be stressed. All that kind of stuff. And all you got to say is, hey, bro, what's happening? <laughs> See, that's that Christian talk that doesn't mean anything. That, that's what this verse is saying. Just let your yes be yes. <laughs> and your no be no. Who are you trying to impress? Because Jesus said, I'm not impressed. I know where you live. I know what you do. I know how you live. <laughs> I know everything there is about you. I know what you're going to do before you do it. So you're not impressing Jesus. You're trying to impress other human beings. So James is saying in his fifth chapter, he said, number one, the, right, the unrighteous rich need to watch themselves. Number two, as saints, remember that the Lord is coming. Everything is not going to be made fair on this side. And then number three, there's the message to worship God, James 5, 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Amen. That's what you do. We pray. You with me? If I'm suffering, and that's natural. If suffering comes, whether it be, whether it be sickness or loss of life or you know, a, a loved one's life, whatever it is, I'm going to pray. If you're suffering, pray. If you're cheerful, sing psalms. Worship God. Worship God in prayer. Either way, when things are going right, when things are going wrong, what we're called to do is to worship God. It's making sense to you? Worship God. Pray and pray for yourself. There's no harm in praying for yourself. Jesus, in his high priestly prayer, he prayed for himself. We, we pray for ourselves when he taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven is give us this day our daily bread. Lord, give me what I need so I can minister, I can serve you, I can praise and worship you. There's no harm in praying for yourself. Praying for yourself is not selfish. It's what we are commanded to do, to pray for ourselves. Amen. And so uh, then we praise God in worship if things are going right. Amen. So I'm cheerful this morning, like my brother. I'm cheerful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, so when things go right, because a lot of things go right. A lot of things go right. Say, man, praise the Lord. So early this week, uh, I got, we got a call saying what they're going to do with my mother one way or another. And I'm going... Sunday, she may be out of here. And, and so as I began to think about what I was going to do and all this, and so uh, the Lord reminded me, pray. And, I, and as I start praying, I start to feel good. Because I, I start praying, I start telling the Lord, yeah, you in charge. See, the insurance company is saying her time is up. You know what I'm saying? 
You know how when you're in hospitals and so forth? Yeah, the insurance company is saying her time is up. But the Lord reminded me, that's just the insurance company. <laughs> and so then, then I started singing, blessed assurance. <laughs> Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And, and, and God reminded me, he said, look, take a look. And I'm driving, I'm looking, I said, man, what a beautiful day. Look at it. Sunshine, blue skies. Look at those clouds. God said, didn't I do all that? If I did all that, can I handle the insurance company? Praise the Lord. Pray. See, the word that word is used for, for pray is the idea of stretching out, reaching toward God. Because we know we can't handle it. That's what prayer is all about. If I think I can handle it, I don't need to pray. But when I realize I can't handle it. See, when I was young, and I did a lot of driving like my son does. <laughs> he'll, 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 uh, he'll call me, Dad, I'm, uh, I'm on the way. I'll be, uh, you in Texas, what do you mean you're on the way? I'll be there shortly. And I said, well, I used to do that. You know, I mean, and I'm not saying he's not praying, but I used to do that. I never prayed. A, I never prayed a wink, <laughs> not a word, not a not a thought, Amen. not a syllable. I jumped in my car because I could do it. And then after a while, I realized that God was keeping me. Amen. I wasn't doing it on my own. Amen. And so you learn to pray and praise God because we realize that we can. That's what prayer is all about. I can't do it. Amen. So uh, when I was younger, I leave here. I never was praying, Lord, help me to get home. <laughs> but now, before I start the vehicle up, <laughs> Lord, help me. Because there's dangers, seen and unseen. You see what I'm saying? And we learn to pray, to put all our, uh, uh, as the Bible says, Put all our cares and anxieties on him because he cares for us. That's what prayer is. So pray for yourself. Praise God in worship. And then James uh, 5.14 says, pray for others. Pray for others. Notice, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know what this, ver this verse is saying? Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And, the, and so the elders come and, they, and uh, they pray over this person. You know what that means? When you're praying over someone, you're praying for them, you're interceding for them, but you're also uh, trying to find out is there any reason why they're sick? Because Paul says sometimes we're sick because we're sinning. So when we pray over somebody, we've talked to someone and, and they've, they've kind of responded. And you know, as brothers and sisters in Christ, when you talk to folks, you know you can begin to tell. It doesn't take you long whether they really are sick because of, uh, of, the own, of uh, uh, you know, other reasons or their own reasons. You, you know whether they really want to be healed or they want their way with God. It doesn't take you long to figure that out. Amen. So, and let me apologize to you here today because in 41 years, people have told me all kind of stuff. And I, and I guess my face shows I don't believe it. <laughs> brother, brother, tell me, I'm coming back. I'm repenting. Pastor, I'll be in church on Sunday. You see that rascal one time? <laughs> And so when he's, when he's telling me, he said, oh, you don't believe me. I, I don't mean not to believe you. <laughs> I'm trying hard to believe you. <laughs> I just can't believe you. <laughs> uh, and, and John the Baptist said to those who were re repenting, he said, bring forth some fruits and keep them. Don't just tell me what you do. Why are you here? <laughs> uh, my sister said he called he, John called them sons of snakes. Yeah, he's snakes. 
And uh, he, says, <laughs> he says, yeah, you're here. Why are you here? To avoid the wrath. A lot of folks want to avoid bad things that happen, you know, but they don't want Jesus. <laughs> they don't want Jesus. Jesus said to many, to a whole group of folks who he had fed, he said, oh, I, I, you follow me because you want to eat. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all know that's true, don't you? <laughs> Next week, we got a church picnic. Watch how many folks show up. <laughs> oh, good to see you. <laughs> Can I pray for you? Pass the plate, man. I thought... <laughs> Well, that's how you, amen. <laughs> so James says, we, we pray over people. He said, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me pray for you. We're going to pray over you in the sense that uh, we understand you're here, but you know, you need, you, your problems are deeper than a plate of food. Your problems are deeper. Can we pray for you? Can we really deal with the situation? Now, that takes boldness in Jesus. That takes boldness, because most folks want you to, you know, don't, hey, you're in my business. Well, but if we're believers in Christ, we're in each other's business. We're in the family. When I see you sick and you need help, then it's the same thing again with my blood family. You see things going on, you say, uh, you, you make a call. Uh, hey, uh, daughter, let me, uh, let, me, uh, let me share something with you, because we love them. And you say, well, they may, they may be mad. I don't care if they are mad. I remember telling my, my daughter that not too long. She'll tell you. Amen. I said something to her. I said, I don't care if you're mad at me or what. Amen. This is the way it's going to be. Because right. I love you too much to just let you go this way. Amen. <laughs> so my daughter got a testimony about me. That's my dad. Long as I do right, he'll help me 100%. But if I'm messing up, I don't expect him to do nothing because he's already showed me. I'm not going to cover up for your mess. Amen. So that's why she's not living in yeah. mess. Yeah. Right. Amen. We got to pray over some folks. Yeah. Over. Yeah. Over. We in charge. You sick. You sick. And, uh, and we understand the, uh, the, uh, what's going on in your life that you need to give up. If you want to get right with God, we can do that for you. And that's why the rest of this thing says, pray anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And so we'll take care of your physical problems. That's anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. But we need to make sure you get right with God. And James goes on and say in verse 15, he says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. That's because the reason you're sick is because you're in disobedience to God. You're out of the will of God. You're living in the flesh. You mind the things of the flesh. You're hostile to the word of God. You're not subject to the word of God. This is what you need to do. This is where you need to be. So we'll pray over you and help you get, help you get, uh, get, uh, get, under that, get, out, get out from under that situation. But the prayer of faith will save the sick because it's the prayer offered in faith. In other words, we've got to the truth of where you are in your relationship with God, and that prayer offered in faith will save the sick. Now, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It's not, it's not something we initiate. It's something that in the process of praying over people, God shares what's going on. And when we respond, that prayer will save the sick. And it says, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So this is the whole idea. Paul says to, to the church of Corinth, some of you are sick. Some of you are weak. Some of you have died because you're in, you've been in disobedience. That's the God we serve. God's got a plan for friendship. And there are those who've been here long enough to know that when God wants to work his plan, he will handle his business. And those who are out of the will of God trying to bring about their business, God knows how to get rid of those people. Doesn't mean they wasn't saved. It just means God said, this is my plan. 
You cannot alter God's plan. Amen. If he's committed sins, he will be forgiven. So then James 5, 16 says, confess your trespasses. Amen. One, uh, to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. You see, the idea here, the idea in these verses is that I'm out of fellowship with God, which has caused and brought about weakness or sickness. I need to get right with God. So, I, so not just like we say, well, you know, uh, I knew I was sinful. I knew I was wrong. So I talked it over with God and me and God are good. No, you're not. You ain't brought no elders in. You see, you got to confess to the elders. So what the elders got to do with it? Because that's the way God has designed it. You got to call someone in who is uh, ready to deal with your problems and then and, and dealing with them, pray and ask God to deal with the whole situation. What many people will do is say, well, uh, you know, I, I prayed about it. I prayed to God and I don't have to deal with anybody else. If, well, if it's concerning other people, you've got to deal with other people. You need to pray for one another. We need to pray for one another. That's why the church is not powerful as, as we could be. We isolate. We try to deal with things on our own, just me and God, and we don't talk to the body and confess. You know, so you find churches where uh, the leaders have gotten into sin, and when they've gotten into sin, they haven't really surrendered and submitted to the will of God, the word of God, to the people in charge, and they just uh, say, well, I got it right with God, and they, and they keep on stepping. Then you see the church is powerless because we haven't gotten right with God. You got to get right with him and do it now. So the effective, effective uh, fervent prayers of the righteous avails much, praying that we may be healed. My brothers and sisters, when, when I get sick or something happens, that's the first thing I do. Lord, am I messing up somewhere? <laughs> am, I mess, am I messing up somewhere? And, and if I get convicted of messing up, I'm calling some brothers and sisters. Say, look, you, look, you know, uh, I got some stuff going on in my thought life. I got some things that God has told me to deal with I ain't dealt with. I need y'all to pray for me. You see what I'm saying? And then you pray, you get healed emotionally, you get healed psychologically, you get healed physically, and you get healed spiritually when we do this thing right. Amen. Praise the Lord. As, my, as some of our brothers say, God wants us to, uh, to be healed. He wants us to be prosperous. I got all that. And, and when those things don't happen, I'm looking inside. Lord, you search me. You try me. Show me where I'm wicked. Show me where I'm wrong. Because, you know, because we deal with situations, again, and we've been dealing with these things for a long time, uh, we've got people who are immoral and proud of it and perform in the church. And you wonder why the church has no power. It says in James 5, 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He's no different than anybody else. All right. Elijah. He ain't no big shot. He's just like you and me. And, you know, our Sunday school lesson, one of the things I loved about our Sunday school lesson this morning, you say, who is the major player? We got Ananias. We got uh, Saul of Tarsus. Uh, we got Jesus Christ. The major player is Jesus. All this happened because of the sovereign working of Jesus. You say, Paul, what did you have to do with it? Nothing. I was out to kill folks, and Jesus appeared brighter than the noonday sun. And he didn't ask me, I got a plan for you if you let me. If you're willing, I'll do this. He said, listen, I'm Jesus. You've been persecuting me. Stop it. You can't, prick against the, uh, you can't kick against the pricks, and I got a mission for you. And, and Paul was blind three days. He didn't ask for it. He didn't pray for it. God, um, Jesus put it on him. He put it on him, he, and, he, and then he directs Ananias. You know, I'm here 41 years at Friendship Baptist Church, not because of, uh, of me. God ordained it. I want to give God the glory. And so when I see Paul, I say, Paul, you had your story. Let me tell you my story. Man, you know, I was working at General Motors. 
my plan was to be uh, make a whole lot of money, get in the, into uh, uh, into the office, you know, and so on, and work salary and all. And I, I was working for me. That's what I was doing. But but uh, life, you made my life so miserable. I had to stop. Had to give it up. I developed a, a, a you know a, a problem in my, in my life. I was uh, a nervous problem because all the things that were going on, and I didn't know you, and I realized I couldn't handle it on my own, and I hated going to work. I hated it. And yet you, in mercy, came into my life, saved me, delivered me, and then you put me in a position, in a place where you could use me for your glory. It's all you. So you say, who, who's the major player? The only player. I'm, I'm on the sidelines. Amen. And when I ask, I say, can I come in to dribble? Let's sit there. I'm handling this. God. It's all about God. And so God tells Elijah, uh, he says, uh, Elijah, go see Ahab. Tell him, tell him it's not going to rain. It wasn't because Elijah thought about it and said, I got an idea. I'm going to go see Ahab. No, he was told to do it. Then later on, uh, God tells uh, Elijah, go see Ahab and tell him it's going to rain. And, and, and God tells uh, Elijah, and tell him to hurry up because it's going to be a downpour. And so what does Elijah do? Based upon the word of God and what God had told him, and Elijah starts out with, the, I mean, excuse me, Ahab starts out with the chariots, and Elijah outruns him in between 15 and 18 miles. He outruns horses and chariots. <laughs> Why? Because the supernatural power of God. See, you and I who come to Jesus Christ, spiritually speaking, the supernatural power of God has caused us to run for Jesus a long time. And we ain't tired yet. Not yet. Running for Jesus. Brother, oh, we on, we've been on the battlefield for a long time. But it's the Lord's fight. And we, we're not giving up. Why? Is it in us? It's God in us. God in us. So you, we confess our faults and then we pray for one another. 517. There's, uh, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. No different. He prayed earnestly that it would rain, not rain, did not rain. James uh, 5, 18 says this, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. Elijah didn't make this happen on his own. God told him, pray, and here's what I'm going to do. That's why we pray. We pray. We pray. We get the will of God, and we trust God, and we pray, and then we act on it. So he, so Elijah did what he was told by God. In the meantime, when he had met with Ahab at different times, Ahab told him, said, there you are. You're the one who's troubling Israel. You're to blame. And he said, no, not us. Not me. It's you and your sinful ways. You are troubling Israel. Because sin in the camp destroys the working of God in our lives. Sent in the camp. God didn't put up with it. So the Bible says, uh, finally, in James 5, the message of winning each other. James 5, 19. All right? You still with me? James 5, 19. See, we want to win one another for Christ. And, and my challenge is to be bold enough to do this. Don't back up because you have the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. James 5, 19. Brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back. Woo! Someone turns him back. Verse 20. Let him know that he, will, that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. That's our challenge. Not, not just to say, Father, thank you. I got my hands in it. Thank you, Lord. I'm saved. That, that, that's good. Don't stop doing that. Lord, I'm saved. I thank you. You've changed my life. But now we, we need to be looking out for those because we're called to turn someone who wanders from the truth and we're called to turn him back. 
Now, let me admit to you, my brothers and sisters, this is hard work. Because in America, most of us don't want, us, don't want anybody messing in our business. And so when folks start going astray, they will tell us, you know, I don't want to hear what you got to say. And, and, and again, we know that. We've been there. But if any of us, if we see someone wander from the truth and we turn him back. So we start out by praying for a, a brother or sister. And we start praying, Father, give me an open door. That's the power of the church. The church of Philadelphia is the church of an open door. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to accept or she's going to accept what we say. But be bold enough to say it anyhow. Because when, when people get turned from the truth, uh, uh, well, guess what happens? Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will, uh, will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. See, James said, that's how you cover a multitude of sins, turning from sin. What people want us to do is to cover a multitude of sin while they stay in sin. So how, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to cover this sin. We're not going to deal with it. We're going to cover a multitude of sins. That's not how we do it. We cover a multitude of sin by turning somebody away from sin. And when we turn, away from, turn them away from sin, then we cover a multitude of sins. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that the Lord stopped me from sinning. You know, I go back uh, to, uh, again, 48 years ago. Because when he did that, and uh, people were witnessing to me, then I turned away. Just think how a multitude of sins that I could have been messing with if God hadn't saved me. So, you, so a whole multitude of sins are covered because someone had enough boldness to turn us away from sin. Amen. Amen. So that's a challenge for us. We got to keep winning one another. Amen. Got to keep, keep challenging. You know, the song is sung. If you miss me from singing down here, you don't find me nowhere. Come on up to bright glory. And I'll be. Amen. Yeah. But before we start missing them <laughs> from, from down here, we need to continue to encourage one another. Amen. And so, uh, you know, sometimes just, hey, uh, how you doing today? And the way they respond lets you know they saying they okay, but they not. Then you, then you prayerfully make a phone call or whatever. You say, hey, you know, you know what? You talked to me the other day. I talked to you. Something, something. The Spirit of God just told me, say, let me just probe a little deeper. I'm not trying to get in your business, but I'm, but I'm concerned about you. I need to pray for you. See, we cover a multitude of sins. So what we're called to do is the message of winning each or each other. Who's my sister that's saying each one? Reach one. Amen. Each one, reach one. And, and by that, I say, you know, let's witness to somebody. Let's, let's tell somebody about Jesus. And we do it very prayerfully. I remember on the job at GM, and I had been with a, I met a guy, and it was like a couple years, the Lord convicted me. And that's how we pray. The Lord convicted me. He said, how long have you known this guy? I said, well, a couple of years. Have you said anything to him about Jesus? I sure haven't. Man, I need to talk to him. And I said, Lord Jesus, please open the door so I can, I can speak to this man about Jesus. And as uh, soon as I had a break in, uh, uh, during the work day, I went over to him. He said, hey, Julius, he said, glad you came by. I wanted to ask you something about religion. And I'm going, up oh, there goes the Lord. It's an open door. And he asked me, and I was able to witness and preach Jesus. Not church attendance, not, not baptism, not taking the Lord's Supper, not trying to do right, not trying to get your life right. Preach Jesus. This is how I was transformed. It's Jesus. Jesus transforms you. We preach Jesus. Is this making sense to you? All right. Praise the Lord. Let me go back to James chapter 1, 16 through 18, and I'll be through. James chapter 1, 16 to 18. So you're getting something out of this? Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. James 1, 16. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Do not be deceived, my beloved brother. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. 
See, God doesn't change. And here's what James is saying. James uh, starts out in the, in the fifth verse, chapter 1. You, you need wisdom? Ask God. God will give, all, give you all the wisdom you need to deal with your life right where it is. Ask God. Ask in faith means when God gives you the answer, trust what he says and abide in it. Do that. Do what he says. As I said, when, uh, years ago, my wife and I were at odds, and she was ready to leave me, and, uh, and I prayed, and God says, here's what you do. And I said, that doesn't make any sense. That's not going to work. The Lord said, well, humor me. Just do it anyhow. And he, and he, he turned everything around. So you're going you're gonna to get wisdom from God if you ask him in faith. You, you understand what I'm saying? If you, you say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. And here's the confidence in James 1, 16, 17, and 18. Understand this, because what Satan is going to tell you is this is not going to work. You, don't, don't listen to that. But, uh, but the Bible tells us in James 1, 16, don't be deceived, brothers, sisters. When God tells you to do something, it's a good gift. It's a, it's a perfect gift. God can't change. He can, he, he's not going to tell you something that won't work. The reason he won't, because there's no shadow of turning in him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the idea, God will give you the understanding, but then what we need to do is make sure, okay, I hear what you said, Lord. I got it, and so now I'm going to do it. That's how we answer in faith. Don't let the enemy deceive you because whatever God tells us to do is good. Amen. Satan says, that ain't, that ain't good there, man. Don't, don't do that, my sister. And God, you say, but, but wait a minute, God told me. And everything he tells me is good. And it's perfect. The word perfect has the idea, it'll mature me. It'll make me be everything Jesus wants me to be. It comes from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Verse 18 says, the proof of this thing. Let me prove you that what God gives you is good and perfect. Of his own will. What wasn't ours. I, I didn't get saved on my own will. I got saved because it, on God's own will, he brought you and me forth by the word of truth. He said, just go back to your salvation experience. When God told you to come and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and you did that, was that true? Did you, did, uh, did, did you get eternal life? Did you get joy? Have you gotten all these things? So of his own will, he begot us. He caused us to be born again by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Meaning, see, as we live our lives, we give our testimony. Say, I know what God has done for me, and he'll do the same for you. Somebody said, there is no secret what God will do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. His arms. <laughs> he'll comfort, he'll strengthen you. There is no secret. Hallelujah. There's no secret. I know what he's done. I know what he can do. I've been there and done that. He's done it. He keeps on doing it. He doesn't change. He's the God who's the giver of every good and perfect gift. Trust him. You get a word from him. Don't doubt him. It may not seem right, but our God knows how to bring us from death to life and to transform our lives. Again, making sense to you? We understand. Our God, he's able to do exceeding, abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. According to the power that works in us by Jesus Christ, world without end, our God, saves to the uttermost. That's the proof of what he tells me today. Because what he told me 41 years ago is absolute truth. Caused me to be born again. 
And so if I've trusted him for 41 years and he tells me something, why can't I trust him today? He does it by the word of truth. There is no shadow of turning. He's never going to give you, he's light. He's never going to give you darkness. He's truth. He's never going to give you error. Amen. Amen. And as we conclude, uh, I think of the beginning of our Sunday school lesson. You know, God told, uh, Jesus told Ananias, <laughs> go down to a, st a street called Straight. <laughs> I remember when I first looked at it, I said, man, I was crooked. Jesus saves me and he says, here, I'm going to send you to a street called Straight. And the Bible says, uh, God says, uh, uh, Jesus says to Ananias, he said, let, let, me, let, me, let me calm you. Let me calm you. So, so this man Saul is praying now. He's praying. Well, he's a Pharisee. He prayed all the time. No, he said prayers. He said prayers. Now he's praying. Have you gone from saying prayers to, to praying? Calling on him. Call on him. And he'll bless you abundantly. Heavenly Father, thank you for your time in the word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So at, at this time, we're going to have uh, our sister. Take your time, my sister. Sister Carol is coming. We got, no, we got no birthdays, no blessed birthdays this day. No blessed birthdays. We got, a, we got a blessed anniversary. Wayne and Renee Trust. All right. How many, how many years? 23. All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So come on, Sister Carol, and then, we'll, then before we go, we're going to sing Blessed uh, Anniversary. Good afternoon, church. I guess it's an afternoon. Yeah. Uh, uh, our Sunday school picnic is next Sunday, our annual church picnic. And um, it's after morning worship. The church will furnish meats, drinks, and paper goods. We're asking each family to bring a covered dish. We will have a meal planned, but just something extra for that day. Um, on the back table, there are programs from our 100th anniversary dinner and uh, key rings. If you would like to take some extra uh, to give to someone, uh, they're back there and available for you today. Uh, they're taking up space. We cleaned yesterday. So if Amen. you want them, take them. Um, and also downstairs, they cleaned out the back hallway back here, and there are hangers that those things were on. If you need plastic hangers, they're plastic hangers, uh, you can uh, pick those up downstairs. And I also have an announcement about uh, God Loves You Tour. Uh, that's Franklin Graham, and it's going to be in Youngstown on Tuesday, September the 27th at 7 p.m. downtown at the Foundation Amphitheater. I'll put these back there if you would like to take one. <laughs> that's all I have, Pastor. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> Somebody else. <laughs> Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. I just have two things. Uh, yesterday we had church cleanup, and so those who came out, I just want to say you did a wonderful job, and the church appreciate all that, all that you done yesterday. Uh, the second thing is, is that next week, right before the picnic, we're going to have a fire drill, right? So the only way the fire drill will be successful is that you participate. 
that means you know we don't want any running and jumping and screaming, right? It just may, when when pastor uh, gives the benediction, stay in your seat. We got people that's going to be at the door. They're going to direct you how to leave the sanctuary. If we do it in orderly and quietly, it'll work out very well. Okay? That's it. Thank you. All right. Any other announcements we need to make? Okay. Let's uh, acknowledge the blessed anniversary for Wayne and Renee, 5, 10, 15, 20. Amen. 5, 10, 15, 25, 30 years of love. You know you're happy. Ooh. Oh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years of love. We pray you're happy. Ooh. All right, my brother. Anything else we need to do? All right. We, we're so glad to get an anniversary. You and the Renee, stay together, Amen. as Al Green would say. <laughs> what would you say? Oh, she going to sing Al Green now. <laughs> Al Green. My wife used to call him Grits. <laughs> you know my wife. <laughs> All right, we're going to close in prayer. Father, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your holy, precious word. Sanctify us through your word. Your word is true. So there's the message of the warning to the unrighteous rich, the message of patience. We've got to wait until the coming of the Lord for things to be made right. And then there's uh, the message at the end. We need to win one another to Christ. Help us to be bold enough to be about your business. We ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. You are dismissed, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thanks for coming. <laughs>